voice messages and text messages. For those of you that have been wanting the option like me to be able to skim them, here's how. Simply force press on the voice message, this it opens up like this, example. tap it, and then it opens up into a whole new screen like you are listening to a voice memo. So now you can scrub through it, but you know, as you scrub, it does pause the audio, but still, you can do it. Now, if you enjoyed that, you're definitely gonna wanna stick around for the rest of the video because I have some more tips and tricks for you because this is the very first episode of the year of my iPhone tips and tricks series. Oh my gosh. Now y'all let me know down below in the comment section, am I the only one that wishes Apple would have a better way for us to scan or skim voice messages. Some of our messages can be lengthy. I'm definitely one of those that can send those. So it would be nice to be able to actually skim it and listen to it, or even better yet, for you to be able to speed it up. Basically for it to behave just like the voice memos app. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Now that I got that off of my chest, cause, ooh, yeah. <laughs> now for this next one, this is how you can open links in the background in Safari. So for example, if I were to like go to Safari right now and force press on one of these links, and tell it to open in a new tab, you'll notice that it actually switched tabs and took me to that one. So if you ever wanted to stay within the tab that you're in, what you're gonna wanna do is head into your settings and you're gonna go to Safari and then we're gonna scroll down to open links and we're gonna change it from in tab to in background. So now when I hop into Safari and I you know, force press on a link, I can choose to open it in the background. And it keeps me on the page that I was on in Safari without automatically taking me to the tab in which I opened. While we're talking about Safari, another thing that you can do is have it always open the desktop version of a website. So for example, you know, this is how the mobile page looks for Apple. But if I was to go into my settings and go to Safari, then I can actually um, navigate down to request desktop site and then turn that on so that it basically automatically loads the desktop version of every website that I go to. So let's see what Apple looks like now when I refresh it. Boom. So as you can see, we now have the desktop version of the Apple website. But if you're the type that wants to sometimes get the desktop version and by default always have the mobile version, the way that you would do that is to press these double A's right here and then you can select request desktop version. But because we're in the desktop version, we now have the option to do the reverse, which is to request the mobile website. Now this next one is how you can silence your alarm using Siri. So if you don't wanna actually interact with it, then you can use your voice to turn it off instead. Hey Siri, stop alarm. And voila. I was hoping that I did not activate my home pods. <laughs> and if for whatever reason it doesn't hear you, then I've noticed the best time to say it is like during the break in the audio of the alarm. But nonetheless, that's how you can do it. Now this next tip also involves Siri. And it's one that I personally like because you can basically get her to calculate your tip. So let's say for instance, it's a $90 bill that you wanna find a tip for. What's the tip on a $90 bill? And basically she'll break it down per percentage, which I like so that you can kind of choose which one you wanna do. And I like this because not only does she break it down in terms of how much you would pay, you know, per percentage that you would select, but also how much your total bill will be after that. So all the math is done for you. Now for this next tip, this has helped me so much when it comes to traveling. Like it gets me started on the right foot. And that's keeping certain things within my notes app regarding you know what I want to put in my suitcase. Now in the past I have used the reminders app to make you know the same to-do list, but what I really enjoy about using the notes app for this is the fact that like it doesn't disappear after I select it as complete. And on top of that, within the same note, I'm able to make subcategories like the shoes that I want to bring and things that I want in my backpack and stuff that I want to make sure that I do before I leave or things that I need to buy before I leave. I just like the way that it looks in here overall. So yeah, I gotta make sure I have like my essentials. Cause I'm not forgetting anything like, you know, my jacket or my shoes or my socks. Real quick, I gotta take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Bombas for partnering with me in this video and shipping out a few pairs of socks and some slippers that I am currently 
enjoying. But I gotta say, the thing though that I really like with Bombas is that every time you buy something, they give away a piece of clothing to someone in need. So you can kind of look at it like every time you buy yourself something, you sort of buy something for someone else, or you at least play part in helping someone else. Now on their site, they offer a ton of different designs, socks, shirts, and even underwear. Now the ones that I personally have are their no-show socks. I got them in a couple of different colors, which they just look good. I really like the green and the brown pair. But I gotta say, their no-show socks are pretty nice because I oftentimes struggle with socks like these. They tend to slip down on my shoes, but so far that hasn't happened with these. But in addition to the no-show socks, I also got their slippers, which I love. I was actually gonna buy some slippers, so they came right on time. I'm the type that stays cold, so when my feet are warm, I'm warm, and these have been perfect. They're super soft on the inside with these like little grippers on the bottom, which makes them great, you know, for all different floor types. But ultimately, I'm a happy customer, but if you are interested in learning some more about them, I'm gonna have them linked down below for you, along with a coupon code, just in case you wanna use it. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, now, did you know that you could create boomerangs in your phone? Or rather, did you know how to do it? Here's how. So the first thing we're gonna do is head into our photos and you're gonna find a live photo that you wanna make a boomerang. And when you tap on it, up in the top left, you'll see an option that says live. What we're gonna do is tap on that and then change it to bounce, I think it is. And it basically does a boomerang. So let's try loop. Loop does it, but it's like, you know, it's this kind of faded transition instead at the end. And then this is what long exposure looks like. So yeah, bounce is the one you wanna to go to though for a boomerang. Now this next tip is within your messages app. And it's basically how you can send message effects and other cool things like, I don't know, some of you may or may not know that you, you know, can come in here and write a message and force press on this arrow over here and choose all of these different effects from sending it as invisible so that you know the person actually has to rub it to reveal it, or you can make it go in gentle like that, make it like a yell, slam it in, or you can go to screen effects and you have all these different, ooh, let me let you at least look at them. You have all these different ones in which you can choose. But another cool thing in here that I think is a nice way to like send someone a message is like digital touch. So if you tap on that, you can now write your message out. And when you send it to them, it actually comes in, you know, the way that you wrote it. So it's like doing the screen recording of what you wrote. Or if you wanna take it a step further, you can actually use two fingers and it'll send a heartbeat. Or if you wanna use two fingers and slide down, it'll send a broken heart. Now, another more personalized way that you can send a message is to actually write the message. Outside of the little black box that we have for digital touch. So instead, what you can do is choose the little handwriting tool here and put hello. I don't think on hello, huh? <laughs> and then I'm gonna hit done. We lose the little animation, but we do have a little bit more room to write at least. I don't know which one is your preferred method. I feel like I like the digital touch method better because it actually shows, you know, you writing on the screen, so. Now taking it back into our messages app, something that you can do instead of doing a tap back to respond or even writing a text is to instead drag a sticker of your emoji on top of the message you're responding to. So let me show you what I mean. So for example, let's say for my response to hello, I wanna take a emoji that is star eyes right here. So I can take it and put it on top of that or I can drag it like this and stack it. Now let's say that you added one by mistake and you wanna remove it. The way that you would do that is to force press on it and then go down to sticker details. And then instead of view, we're gonna swipe to the left, hit the trash can, boom, it's gone. <laughs> and then sticker details again, swipe to the left and hit the trash can. So now they have been removed successfully. Now this last tip is how you can kind of add yet another personal touch to the way you send messages or the way that you post your captions on things like Instagram. And that's to have custom font. So if we head into Safari and we navigate to this site, which is jipu, G-Y-P-U dot com. When you're in here, you can go to like any of these categories. So let's say I want to go to Instagram fonts. I can come in here and I can type in what I want, whatever I want, and then choose, oops, my phone's about to die, and then choose one of the custom fonts here, and I can just select copy, take it back over into messages, 
paste it, and it comes in the way that I copied it from that website. And the same thing applies to if you were to go to Instagram and try to use it within a caption. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this round of tips and tricks and you found some advantageous to you. But if you have any that you wanna let me know about, you can feel free to drop them down below in the comment section. And also while you're down there, let me know what video you wanna see next. I have a few ideas of some that I wanna drop, but I'm interested to hear from you all. I might even poll y'all on Instagram to get even more insight on what y'all want to see. So um, yeah, if you don't follow me up there, you can find me at Tech Me Out, T-E-C-H-M-E-0-U-T. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to uh, stick around in the comments for a little bit after this one and chat with you all. But until the next one, y'all, as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.